Hello there, my name is Richard McMunn and welcome to this presentation which is spatial reasoning tests, what they are and how to pass them. Now during this short presentation I'm going to give you some really cool tips and strategies for helping you to pass any kind of spatial reasoning test question. Now spatial reasoning tests are generally used during job or career selection processes for more of the technical types of role. For example, if you're going to join the Royal Air Force, then it's highly likely that you would be required to undertake a spatial reasoning test. Now, as I go through the presentation, make sure you have with you a pen and a piece of paper and take note of the important hints and tips that I'm going to provide you with because there's one in particular that's really going to help you to gain very high marks during spatial tests. Now, once you've seen the presentation, um, below this video there is a link and you can get my book. You can download it now. It's got over 200 pages of spatial reasoning test questions so you can start practicing straight away. But before you do that, let's get into the main bulk of the presentation. So the first thing that we need to look during your pre um, preparation for tackling spatial reasoning tests is what are they? We need to understand what they are. Well, basically, spatial reasoning is the ability to interpret and make drawings from mental images and visualize movement or changes within those images that are presented in front of you. So, for example, you might be required to look at an image of a triangle and you will have to move it around in your mind and connect it with other kinds of shapes. Now, spatial reasoning will sometimes come in two-dimensional format. It may also come in three-dimensional format. There are lots of variants of the kinds of questions and within the book that you're going to download after this presentation, there are all of the different types of questions that you can get. But in this presentation, I'm going to talk about two-dimensional and also three-dimensional shapes. So tips for gaining high scores. Write these down, guys, because they are very important. First thing is to obviously find out what type of test questions will you be required to undertake. Are they two-dimensional? Are they three-dimensional? Um, and what basic type of questions will you have to answer? Now, a lot of test administrators or employers will provide you with sample questions, and I would get a copy of them straight away. Have a look at the kind of questions and then start researching online to try and find additional questions that are very similar to the ones that you will be require, required to undertake during the actual test. And I think that's important because what we want to do is obviously prepare fully for the test. If we carry out lots of questions, okay, before we go to the test, then the chances are that we will get higher scores. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there's one tip I'm going to give you in a minute, which I think is so crucial. People who I've coached to prepare for spatial reasoning tests have used this tip and it has helped them to answer lots and lots of questions in a fast manner. Okay, so if you're unsure and the test administrator or the employer doesn't give you any sample questions, contact the employer or the test, test center and ask them, what kind of questions am I gonna be required to undertake? There's nothing wrong with doing that prior to the actual assessment. Now, once you know the types of questions you'll be required to answer, practice lots of sample questions, but do them both under timed conditions and also untimed. Now, when I say untimed conditions, you should do that first of all. Don't put yourself under any pressure. Just go through a load of sample questions and don't time yourself. And the reason why I want you to do that is because I want you to understand the questions. Okay, so just understand the questions. Don't put yourself under any time conditions. Now, once you understand the kind of questions and the more you practice, the more you'll become familiar with them and also your strategy for passing them, then you can start putting yourself under time conditions. Now, write this down. The vast majority of employers or test centers will give you a spatial reasoning test where there are too many questions for you to answer in the given time frame. Now, what that tends to do to a lot of people when they're carrying out their test is they start to panic because they might look around the room and see other people who might be ahead of them and they start to panic. That's what it's designed to do, is to put you under pressure. You have to remain calm. And if you have in your mind that, look, it is highly unlikely that I'm going to finish this test, but the questions that I do answer, I will do them to my best of my ability and I will make sure that the ones that I do answer are correct, then you will have a better chance of passing. Because 
lots of test centers and employers will deduct marks okay for guessing so you need to aim for speed as well as accuracy so yes it is important to work fast but remember the chances are you're not going to finish the exam you're not going to finish the test you won't get to the end of it okay if you do brilliant but you have to make sure you aim for speed as well as accuracy now the reason why I say that is because lots of test centers and employers will deduct marks for incorrect answers or guesses okay so if you get to the end of the test or you see that there's a few minutes remaining don't start guessing because a lot of test centers will deduct marks for incorrect answers so my advice is to aim for speed as well as accuracy and a real important tip okay this is a brilliant one when taking spatial reasoning tests is to look to eliminate answer options very quickly let's take a look at this question so here's a first sample spatial reasoning test question now your task is to look at the given shapes okay so you've got a b c d and e look at the given shapes and decide which of the examples matches the shape when joined together by the corresponding letter so we've got three shapes at the top we have to join them together by the corresponding letters and then look out of the five options which one it matches and there will only be one that it will match with now this is a very basic spatial reasoning test question of this format this is two dimensional now what you can do if you look at that tip look to eliminate answer options quickly and what I mean by that is there is a great way that you can just knock out probably 50% or 70% of the answer options so don't start to visualize in your mind what that shape would look like when it is all together just look at one option so what we're going to do here is join that rectangle side A with the triangle side A so we're just going to join them together in our mind we're then going to quickly look, look at the answer options and eliminate as many as we can now if that side of the triangle is joined to that side of the rectangle we can eliminate answer A straight away we can see B there that could be that option C it isn't because it's not the right side so we'll el eliminate C and we can also eliminate E so straight away immediately we know the answer is either B or D and that's just by looking at one side of these two shapes we're not thinking about putting it all together we will do that now so we can then move the bottom of triangle B to the top of rectangle um, here so we join that on the top and we can see that the correct answer therefore is is B okay so we'll move that around in our mind and we can see that that side there of A is joined together it isn't D because it's not the right way round okay so we put that on the top and then we move it around the correct answer is B now you can do that really quick by a process of elimination just eliminate answer options quickly don't look to form the pattern met all of it mentally in your head just do one part of it and then look to eliminate answers and I guarantee if you follow that tip you will score higher than the vast numbers of competition in the room at the test center okay so look to eliminate work very quickly let's have a look at another example so look to eliminate answers quickly so we're going to join the shapes up so we could spend time thinking okay that side B goes on there and A goes here and trying to put it in our mind just do one part of the puzzle one part of the spatial test straight away so I'm going to put A that triangle underneath that shape there and then I'm going to look to eliminate answers quickly so we know straight away it's not A it can't be because that bottom or sorry the top of that triangle will go on the bottom of that shape there so it's not A and it isn't B either because that's not the correct shape and it isn't C because that doesn't fit on either and it's not E therefore straight away I know that the answer is D and that's without even doing any work I am literally eliminating those four answers and the correct answer is D so I've done that very quickly by a process of elimination and I can't get it home enough to you guys how important that is to work through a process of elimination now let's now move on to a three dimensional shape example question now what we have to do is to decide which of the four options A B C or D demonstrates both of these objects in the shaded box rotated with the dots in the same correct position now what we are going to do is a process of elimination what you should do with these kind of shapes is not look at both of them just choose one of them first of all and go through my process of elimination so we're going to get rid of some of the answer options 
So let's take this one. What we have to do is rotate this shape round in our head. So with that dot staying in the same position, if we rotated that round, we know that it can't be A because there's no way that that small black circle can be in the top there because it's in the bottom. So we can immediately get rid of A without looking at the second shape. Now we look at B. If we were to stand this on its end, we know that B could be the answer. So it could be B. Could it be D? No, it couldn't because if we rotate that round, it would be on that side at the top left. So it's not D. Okay, and could the answer, could it be C? If we rotate that round, well, that black shape would be on the bottom left. So the answer is no, it couldn't be. So the correct answer is B. Now, if you look at this right hand shape, if you look at the shape on the right hand side, it is virtually, well, it is identical to one on C. But if that black dot was moved up to the top left, it would be there and not on the top of the shape. So the answer is B. And we've done that quickly by a process of elimination. Because when we just tackle one shape at a time, we're not confusing the mind. Because spatial reasoning, it can be get confusing and frustrating. But if we just pick one shape and work with that, we can eliminate lots of answers and come up with the correct answer quickly. Let's now take a look, look at a different type of spatial reasoning question. So you have to decide which of the four options, A, B, C or D, is identical to the first. So if we look at the first shape, and the question is which of the figures presented, A, B, C or D, is identical to the first? So again, let's look to eliminate answers quickly. So what we can do with this shape, instead of getting confused with all of the patterns, what we can do is just look at one side of the first shape. So if you just look at the shapes inside, you'll see that there's a white square, there is a square of a cross, and there is a square which is black. So let's just pick one row. Okay, so let's pick the outside row. Now we know that in order for any of these answers to be correct, we have to find that sequence in some of these here on any of the sides because it would be rotated. A white square, one with a cross, followed by a black square. So let's start searching that quickly. We're not looking at any other elements of that shape, but we're going to look to do a process of elimination. So with A, can we find white, cross, black? White, cross. No, we can't. So we know straight away it isn't A. Let's look at B, white, cross, black white cross black in that sort of format no we can't find it okay now it could be moving upwards but we know that that's moving to the right and it doesn't start with the black one so that again is not correct it's not B if we then look for C is there anywhere that starts with white cross black in that order yes so it could be C white cross black there it is at the bottom and then if we look at D again in that same format going from left to right no we can't find it so therefore, the correct answer is C, and that's just by picking one side of the shape. So just by following a process of elimination, you will be able to get rid of either 50 or 75% of the answers straight away, and then you can just look at the final one and check that it's, you know, it is actually the correct one. And we can see that this is by looking at C and looking at the rest of the shapes that we know it's the correct answer. Okay, so there's just a number of short tips there. What you need to do, remember, I, I said this at the beginning, you have to practice lots and lots of sample spatial reasoning tests. So within this book, it's got over 200 pages, got hundreds of sample spatial reasoning tests of a variety of different kinds, from two-dimensional, three-dimensional, etc. So you can get this book now, you can download it um, below this video, or you can get it on Amazon, just search for Spatial Reasoning Test Questions by Richard McMahon. Um, and all that's left for me to do is just wish you all the very best in your pursuit to, to passing your Spatial Reasoning Test. Get yourself the book now, and thank you for watching.